Hello. Let me put it down here. Can I turn it off for now? Okay, hello, good evening. Um, my name is Xenia Leidel. I'm the producer of the event tonight and I will give you a short introduction on the people who did it actually. Um, we want to thank first and I would like to ask you to raise your hands whenever I call your name. Um, our assistants who jumped in to help us really fast for this event. As there is Albina, who also does the technique tonight. Um, Gabriela. She did all your photos. Lisa is not here tonight, but you will meet her the next days. Romy is just looking for lost people to bring them over. Juan was here earlier to help you. We'll meet him the next days. Um, a very special thank you goes to Laurence, who prepared all your um, welcome sheets, stuff, and papers, and um, tickets, and maps to find the way. Um, I would also thank a lot, would like to thank um, Simona at the bar. You will meet her the next day at the cafe over there. And um, Judith outside, um, who just made a barbecue for tonight. Joseph is our um, filmer and photographer. He will take photos of you. If you don't want to be on photos or on films, just let us know. Um, and um, a very super special thank you goes to Ruth Sergel who helped me organize this event from the scratch on, and she has been on top of everything. And I learned a lot on how to make notes and lists and <laughs> keep track of things in the last days. I will now um, let you know who our teachers are. Um, Jacques, I haven't met you yet. You are here, Mark told me. Jacques Höpfner. Um, Dan Shorten isn't here yet. He will come the next days, Michelle. Ryan, Monty, Fubi is not here yet, so the people who do the Bang FX will meet him the next days. Then we have Ben and Selina from the Space and Video Workshop, they're in the back. And um, the, la the last one is Jacob for the Augmented Reality, he's also not here tonight. Uh, I'm very happy that you're all here, that you made it, and that we made it, that we at least have some girls' t-shirts for tonight, because I forgot my special thing for tonight, and I introduce you, or I hand the microphone over to Mark. Wait, wait, do not leave this stage. I can do this, I can do this without feedback. She says she was the producer of the tonight. She's not just the producer of tonight. She's the producer of all of this. God knows I could never do this. We really need to give a round of applause to Xenia because we would not be here and this organization would not be happening if it wasn't for her. So thank you very much.
sorry for all the feedback. It's kind of exciting, actually. Yes. Okay. Maybe just turn it down a little bit. I think it'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, even a little bit more. I feel still hear a little bit of feedback. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you all for coming. This is really kind of unbelievable that I see you out there and I know why you're here. That really is something quite special for me. So there's a lot I want to say tonight, but you know, sometimes when you go to a really fancy restaurant, you get a little tiny plate at the beginning of something kind of nice, yeah? I thought I'd start with just a little tiny plate of something. See if it wants to behave. that channel up, channel 11. Ah, seeing. Ah, I see, I should have practiced more. But, but really, the reason I wanted to show it, one of the things that you get tonight is the new Leap Motion actor that's in Isadora, uh, the new version. So I just wanted to show that off a little bit. So here's a little Leap Motion, and we have a new actor just to deal with that. So that was like my little way of introducing that. Okay. So that, by the way, the, the title of that piece is How Mark Spent His Entire Life, which is flipping ones and zeros around. That's, that's the entire story. Okay. So now we can get to the real story and start here. So given that this is the first time we've done this, I want to kind of take a minute to look back at what happened. Like, why are we in this room tonight? Yeah? So we'll do this in chronological order. Where did we come from? Where are we now? And where are we going? Yeah? It's a simple story. So let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there were two interactive artists living in New York. One was a composer and one was a choreographer, and they were interested in making interactive performance. And they weren't totally happy with the software that they were trying to, to use to, to make this. And so one of them, who also happened to be a programmer of some sort, started thinking about, well, what software do I want? So what I want to show you tonight, that hardly anyone has ever seen these, um, these are um, files with timestamps that start October 26, 1999, so the end of 1999. These are the Photoshop drawings I made of what I thought Isadora would look like before I ever wrote one line of code. And I'll just look at that OS9 window. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> God, it's amazing. So this is how I started to visualize what I thought. And now it's starting to look like what you know, right? And so. I sat and I made these drawings and I started thinking about what is it that I want this software to do? How would it feel good to me? And that's the thing that's maybe the most shocking about this is that I made it for me and here you are. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. So we got Isadora 1.0 was actually shown, released to the public March 2002 was the first copy that I sold. That's ISM0001. That was purchased by the guitar teacher at California Institute of the Arts, where I went to school. I don't even think he was using it for a project. I think he just did it to be nice. So that was the first copy of Isadora that was ever sold. So OK, so people started using it. The first people to use it were those two interactive artists in the apartment in New York, uh, Troika Ranch. And so that's a nice opportunity also, as I bring up the classic clip from the demo, which is Don Stapiello my collaborator with Troika Ranch, who was there all this time at the beginning. And it was such a tight thing. We were, we were working on pieces. I was making the software. So it's nice that she makes an appearance in this frozen state that you've all seen her at the age of 26. 
Um, but then we started teaching some workshops and people started writing me and people got interested. And then suddenly there was a whole contingent of people. There were interactive performers, there were VJs and visual artists. In other words, most of the people that were using the software were somehow off onto the side into some kind of experimental art. They were on the forefront of experimenting with interactivity, which was one of the things that attracted them to Isadora, right? But the other thing was, we made this also for dancers. We were working with dancers a lot. And so we tried to make it so it was really easy for them because it's, remember, it's 2002. It's early, right? The internet is eight years old and people are just getting used to this kind of stuff. It didn't feel good. A lot of people didn't have a lot of experience. And so we just kept revising the software to make it really work for them. So, and it went on that way for quite some time. But then, a few years ago, maybe four, five, something like this, something started to change. And suddenly there were people that were big, important theaters and big, important museums, and video designers were buying Isadora. And it was like, who are these people and why are they buying this software? You know, what, what's going on with that? Well, I guess that, you know, we had to think about why that was happening, but we also had to respond to it. And so that was Isadora 2.0. And we saw that there were kind of two things happening. There were these interactive artists and there were these professional theater designers using it. And so we, we took a big step then. We, you know, we, Isadora had been based on the CPU and we moved it all to the GPU. So you got these big performance games, uh, super stable video uh, playback, the new Izzy map projection system, we enhanced the user interface and we kind of brought it up to date. It was still looking a little OS 9 like that window that I showed earlier, you know, all the kind of curvy uh, 3D buttons and everything like that. But it was a big step and most of you who use Isadora have been using 2.0, you know what it means in terms of what, what, the, what it was before and what came after. And we've been at it pretty much continuously since then to try and continue to, to improve it. Oops, that slide was not supposed to come yet. Okay, it's weird, I have it in single screen mode. I can't see my scene list, so I don't, that's actually my notes, so it's a little tricky. So you get to see it again. So the thing is though, the, the, the reason that slide, the, the, the answer, the reason that slide appears is because in the early days, in those VJ and interactive performance and experimental artist times, you'd say, they say, oh, well, what's that software you're using? They, you'd say, Isadora, and that's when they'd say, huh, that's, that's the joke, <laughs> right? And you'd be like, what, what's that? Um, and I think it's fascinating now that, uh, I mean, with me, people ask me what I do and I say I work in it, but you must have the same experience. They say, well, what's the software that you're working on? And now the answer has changed. The answer is, oh yeah, Isadora, I know someone who used that for a show. Or else maybe even they used it themselves. And so it's, it's really, something's really grown. It's, it's, it's really amazing what has happened over this time span. That's why I wanted to go all the way back to 1999. So, how did that happen? Okay, I talked about some of the features that maybe are some of the reasons. Especially in the early days with the CPU and everything, it was super fast, so maybe it was speed, or maybe it was reliability. I know some Windows people out there are saying, mm, but you know, it's re reliability. You know, the scene-based structure, somehow it's still unique. I don't know why, but it's, it's for those of us who work in live theater, that's a structure that makes a lot of sense. And of course, the ease of use. So was it those things that made Isadora grow and so that the answer changed to I know someone who used that for a show? Yes, that's part of the reason. But it's because of your creativity, you and everybody else who isn't here who couldn't come, who lives too far away. It's because of your creativity, it's because of your artistry, and it's because of your enthusiasm that we're here today. So it's really, this is my chance not really to, to come up here and thank you because no matter how well we would have done and how great a software we would have made, if people didn't see you putting stuff on stage that they wanted to do too, they wouldn't want the software. So that's your contribution to this process and the Isadora community and the kind of people that for some reason tend to use the software, that is a, something that is a really interesting bond and it's a certain kind of person and that's why we've gotten to this point today. Okay, so here we are at this point. And so now we have to start thinking about, well, where are we now? 
The thing is, those two, those two threads, they still exist. And they're even stronger. The usage in like video designers and people like that, people who just want to cue their shows and make sure that they can reliably projection map into, a, uh, into an object and, and cue things the way they want, there's a lot of those people. But there's still many, many people who are down in there tweaking, who are in there turning things into like, you know, people that like want to hook Arduinos to their brains and control the speed of a movie. You know, there's, we, that's our community is both of those people. And so part of where we're going with the software, where we are now, is to acknowledge that. So one of the things that you may have seen already on the t-shirts, that's the new logo for Isadora. We had a wonderful designer here in Berlin, Carson Stabenow, design this for us. And you know what I love about this, uh, this logo? These four dots, because those four dots are the places that you hook up the wires that allow you to make the thing that is your thing and not our thing, right? For those of you who know the program, you know that those four dots are the key to what allows you to customize it and make it yours. So, so we have to think about how we serve both of those communities, and that has to do with the things that we're going to talk about tonight that are going to be in Isadora 2.5. But the one thing that we did, we also came up with this. It's not a media server. I think it's actually more than a media server, but it also, it doesn't fit that mold. And so we came up with this, this kind of phrase that Isadora is the creativity server. It's about that thing of getting you to show your ideas, to be free to improvise and play and come out with a thing that is very personal to you. So that's how we're going to refer to Isadora from now on as the creativity server. I also want to take a minute to acknowledge how we got to this moment, because it's not just you, it's these folks, OK? Two years ago, there was a meeting that some of you actually were at where we got together to see what is the state of the software. This was before Isadora 2.0. And it just became clear we had to take a really big step. And it was at that moment that I hired several of these people to help. Some of them had been there before. Michelle had been with us working you know, on the forum, and so had Graham, but not kind of in an official capacity. So I said, you know, we're, we're going to need a team to do this, and I put those people on. These are the first responders. These are the people that you interact with when you have trouble or when you need a license tomorrow, those kinds of situations. And one of the things that I think also sets us apart is that we take a lot of care for our customers. We respond as quickly as we can, and we really dig in with them when they have a problem and give as much as we can. So we owe a lot of uh, uh, gratitude to this group of people as well. And I just want to say them all by name. Um, so Senia Lidell, Production and Sales. You met her earlier and also the producer of this event. Technical support is Ryan Weber, better known on the forum as DustX. Uh, Monty Martin is also technical support. He's on the forum as MC Monty. Um, the forum moderators are Michelle Weber, better known on the forum as Michelle. And there's also Graham Thorne, who is better known as Sculpture. Now, Graham, you saw, was in the picture that was off to the right. Unfortunately, um, we're really sad to say that Graham could not join us, but it's for a really good purpose. Actually, Graham is training the newest member of the Troikatronics team. Um, and this is a really uh, exciting addition to the team. I want you to meet him. He's the head of post-millennial outreach. This is, uh, Seth, this is Seth Thorne, Graham's new child. And if you think that that kid will not be able to code Isadora at five, you are wrong. <laughs> I can promise you. OK? All right. So all right, here's the real stuff now. Um, for this bit, I'm not going to be full screen. I'm going to switch back to uh, preview mode so that I can actually just illustrate it right in the software itself. So a few small user interface enhancements, but ones that I think will be meaningful. The first one. It's not really such a big deal, but it just makes it look a little bit nicer. Up here, you'll see that the toolbox filters are now icons instead of names. And that gives us a little bit more room to expand that list, actually. But one nice thing that you might like is this little heart icon. That's a new one. And so for instance, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the modules that, of course, I'm using all the time, I'm sure you are too, is an envelope generator, if I can spell. So I'm like, oh yeah, the envelope generator, that's one I want to have around all the time. So you just click. And you drop it in the heart. And now whenever you click on the heart, the envelope generator is there. So you can just add as many actors here, the ones that you just always need to get to as quickly as possible. Small thing, but it makes it really handy. So that's one small user interface addition. But this is the thing that people have been asking me for for 12 years. 
And finally, finally I gave it. That's right, you can click over here and zoom your mouse, and you can actually zoom in and out. Yes. And <laughs> Yes, I know. It only it only took 12 years to do. But for those of you those of you who make gigantic complicated patches, you know, one of my favorite things in the early days was receiving patches that were so complex with so many cords put in it put it between it and the users asking me, "Could you just take a look at this and help me figure out what's going on?" Anyway, so so yeah, so that's it. So you've got you can you can use the scroll wheel on the mouse to do that, but also down here you've got these zoom in and zoom out buttons. If you hit the center one, it returns to normal size. And in addition to scrolling up and down with the mouse button, you can also just, if you press and drag, you can just move the whole thing around. It's not a very big patch to impress you with in terms of moving it around, but that's, that's what that functionality is. So that'll make things, for people that are working with big complicated patches, it's gonna make it a lot easier to do, yeah? So, also, we've continued and kind of come, to, I think, close to the end of the, getting everything moved over to the GPU. So there's a whole new list of uh, GPU-based effects that weren't there before. The most important one being the Gaussian blur. It's really awesome now because you can just pass like tons of high-res video through and it just is super fast. And it looks almost exactly like the old one and they're quite compatible. I mean, all of these, by the way, that was part of the effort that slowed it down was keeping it compatible with the GPU, the old core image stuff on Apple, and also the old CPU version, so that we keep, you know, we, that's the thing about Isadora, we've tried to also make sure that all your old patches somehow will still work, right? So that's one thing. And so that's, that's a nice step. But to, the really big story that I have for you tonight is the next thing, and that next thing will make this, will make this less important, and you'll see why in a moment. So the next thing I wanna show you is called the GLSL Shader Actor. And um, for those of you who don't know, GLSL is a short for, uh, it's OpenGL Shader Language. It's actually a programming language, much like C or C++. It looks like text like that, and it compiles and runs on your graphics card. So it's very much like what happens on your CPU, but remember, the graphics card runs everything in parallel, so it's much, much faster than a CPU. So I'm going to show you what the capabilities of this actor are and give you an idea about that. So let's start here. This is a clip I took from the web that's uh, for testing doing chroma keys, yeah? And you can see that there's a GLSL shader actor here, and it is, um, uh, it's just sitting here and passing the video through uh, because the default state is just that it takes the video in and gives you exactly the same thing out. But over here, and here I've got, here's some GLSL code, yeah? Anybody who knows C++ or maybe Java, this probably looks pretty familiar to you. Some of you are now horrified. I understand that. This is not for the faint of heart, necessarily. Um, it's for, you know, I mean, some of you, I, as I said, I'm sure you kind of like, just go like this when you see a curly brace. I'm the guy who was like, I like curly braces, you know, but, but, but for a lot of you, this is very much antithetical to what Isadora is, right? But just stick with me for this. Don't be intimidated by this for a moment because all I'm gonna do is, let's just say that I, I found this somewhere, this GLSL code. I'm gonna copy that, this text, and I'm gonna go into this shader. It's giving you a little warning. One of the dangerous things with this, <laughs> one, of the, one of the dangerous things with these shader codes is that the one thing you don't wanna do is write an infinite loop because that absolutely will freeze your machine completely, right? So, a little bit, we felt we needed to put a little something there to remind people that that was possible. So we open this up and we have this text editor. Also, any of you use the text editing features like this in Isadora before, this is much enhanced. You can see that for this code stuff that we have, uh, we've color, we have code coloring. We now have a search and replace box at the top that you can use, but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about coding, uh, but we can, we can do that over a beer later. But the main thing is that's where this code goes so the code that I copied from over there, it's about this long, and I say okay. Now pay attention here to what, look at her skin especially when I say okay. Okay, it just got darker. And it got darker because the hue input on this, you see there's a hue input, is set to zero. And for those of us who work a lot with uh, color stuff in Photoshop, whatever, zero is red, 120 degrees is green, and, and uh, uh, 240 degrees is blue, right? 
So it's kind of trying to take the red out, and her skin is a little bit red. But if I take this and I slide it up and set, whoops, wrong number. If I take the hue and I move this up to 120, wham, you have a beautiful chroma key. And we have a few other parameters here that we can play with. There's a smoothing factor. And you can see, like, if I take it all the way to the bottom, all the stuff around her hair isn't very good. And you see the top corner. And certainly that sheer cloth is not very good. But when you set it to a, the right place, which is 0.5, even this cloth, it's not doing too bad a job. You still see a little bit of the green, but it's still coming through. And so there's also a threshold here, which you can control. So basically, I just created, with that piece of text, the chroma key actor that you already have in Isadora. Right? So, and let's go one step further with that. Here is a classic. Okay, we're back. Thank you. Hi, Don. Thanks. Good to have you with us, as always. So, here's another GLSL shader that's just doing the pass through right now. One of the, one of the old classic actors that we have in Isadora that uh, wasn't on that GPU list was Doc, right? Well, I just so happen to have over here in this text editor, here's some more code, even less actually than the other one. Paste, compile, okay, and then voila. Oh wait, let me turn up the dot scale here. So voila, dots, right? But the thing is, the old dots on the CPU, try running, a, try running an HD video through that, and now your frame rate is like 15 or worse, right? With this, I mean, absolutely you can do HD and probably beyond. You know, by the way, Michelle Weber, you should ask him if you're curious, has been doing experiments with 4K and Isadora also seems to work fine. Yeah? So, but just to, to do the, uh, the classic example, which I've done in about 10 million workshops, we take the sound level watcher, the sound level watcher measuring the amplitude of the sound in the room, and we hook that up into the dot size so that I can bah, 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 bah. So real-time control, right? It's what you're used to in Isadora. It's why Isadora exists in the first place. But now we've taken that capability and moved it to the realm of the GPU and the ability to just copy and paste little, little pieces of code and make that happen. This is super significant. And I want to take a minute. Sorry, I have to click over. Take a minute to explain why. The biggest thing is that we can start sending you new effects at any time by simply pasting some text into the form or any place else. We don't have to update Isadora. I don't have to program anything. We just paste it there or else put it in our new area in the new website where you can download it and you'll be able to be adding those effects. So that means much more rapid expansion of the kinds of effects that we can do. It also means for those of you who love curly braces, that you can get in there and start working on these things and maybe tweak them yourself and change them. So we have a new opportunity, like with the user actors, where the user community can start contributing these. And again, the expansion of the possibilities of these kinds of effects really grows quickly. Obviously, as I mentioned, real-time interactivity on HD images, that's all possible with these. And, um, and as I also mentioned, it's just as easy as posting a text file. And one of the things that's pretty cool about that if I can get it to go there. So here we're going to a folder in the application support where Troikatronics keeps its thing. So there's a folder here called GLSL plugins. And if I look in there, here are some text files yeah, that I've placed there. So there's this special folder now. And if we go to the little icon here that says GLSL in the toolbox, you'll see that those actors are there. So if you really like an actor, all you got to do is take that text file, drop it into that folder, and it's there in the toolbox, just like another actor would be for you, ready to go. Yeah? So to give you, um, so that that's means that the, the kinds of things that a lot of people want to do with Isadora, doing these kinds of manipulations of video are just going to go faster, and you're going to get more material and more opportunities to work with that more quickly. But that's only one part of the story. There's another really big part of this. And I realize that, sorry, I'm giving away the website preview, but I have to now, let's see, let's do it this way. We'll get a new browser to do that. So I'm going to take you to a, short, a site called Shader Toy. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this. 
This is the YouTube of GLSL shader code. This is a place where people can upload creations that they've made that are this kind of the same kind of code that I've just been showing you. And they have a system for browsing it, tagging it, rating it, all that kind of thing, right? And for all of these, if you want to see it, you just point your mouse at the, the little thumbnail and you can see the animation. Or like this one, or like this one, or like this one. Okay? Like things like this, well, we'll we'll see in a minute. But here's here's one of my favorites. I'm gonna do a search here. I'm gonna do a search for water. Okay. So here's a bunch of uh, here's a bunch of these that have been tagged with water. And again, if you put the mouse over, you can see them. But this is my favorite one. And so I'm gonna click on that. And over on the left, you see the preview. And there's the OpenGL shader code. Now this is something that for some of you might be kind of weird to grasp. It, it was even for me in the beginning. There is no image here at all. There isn't a picture. There isn't um, a video. This thing that you're seeing, some guy sat down and wrote this code, and it's making that picture right now. Um, I said, you know, you know, when I said, you know, some people don't, you might not like curly braces. It's antithetical to Isidore or whatever, like intimidation. This intimidates me. I'm telling you, this is like way beyond me. Um, it's really astonishing some of the things that they can do. And there is so much. There's this site. There's one called GLSL Sandbox. There's a number of these sites where you can find this kind of code. But just to show you what I mean, so I'm just going to go over here, and I select the whole thing. I say copy. I tab over to Isadora. I click open the GLSL shader. Paste this in and say OK. Voila. Yeah. Actually, I, I would like to give credit where credit is due here. Who, who did this? Where's his name? TDM. Whoever TDM is, you're a genius, man. That's awesome. OK. So, so OK. Um, but let's, let's have even a little bit more fun with this. Oh, wait. There's something important happened I really want to point out. Take a look at the icon that suddenly appeared inside of this actor. So many, many, many of these, uh, of these shaders have Creative Commons licenses on them. And I felt that that was something really important for us to respect. So if there is a Creative Co li a Commons license in the, in the source code, it picks that up and it tells you the exact license that you're dealing with in the icon. So you are reminded that this is a non-commercial license. You are not to use this to make money with right, without permission. Because I felt like that was really something we needed to communicate because there's going to be a lot of copying and pasting going on here. And actually, it's also a by attribution, by all rights, you should have the name of this person in your program when you do a show. A Creative Commons is a really important thing that we should pay attention to. So I wanted to support that here. So if you see that icon in the middle, pay attention to it, right, because it means something. OK. But to have a, just a tiny bit more fun with this, oh, by the way, it's a little bit glitchy. And the reason why is because I'm running it here too. Um, you know, it, this, is a, this is a pretty heavy one, I have to say. So if I close this browser window, I think it's going to be gorgeous again. Yeah? OK. So uh, just again, to, after my slightly failed little tiny plate at the beginning, we'll show off a leap motion actor here one more time. It's because one of the inputs, I, I, not, this just came built in, because one of the inputs that's on many of these automatically it says mouse horizontal and mouse vertical. And that, for many shaders, it's just part of what they already have because it's also part of the shader toy specification. So if I take my leap motion, exactly. <laughs> OK. So, so I, I mean, you get the picture. It's really interesting because almost none of the stuff on Shader Toy is actually effect. It's all generative stuff. But the imagery, some of it is really beautiful. You'll also see that there's a lot of like VJ style stuff on there too, especially on, on like um, on GLSL Sandbox. Oh, of course I did. Okay, GLSL Sandbox. Yeah, party, rage, fear, hate. Okay, um, it's a political year. What are you going to do? Um, 
but stuff like let's say this kind of thing, yeah. And let's see, let's see if this one, you can, same kind of thing here. You can copy and paste. Let's see if that is, does what it's supposed to do here. Okay, something's sometimes the sometimes from time to time some of the code is like not perfectly working out. That one didn't want to work, so okay, we let it go. But most of the time, the stuff that you're pasting is working. So that part is very Isidora-like. You don't have to know anything about source code. You just have to know, I like this image, and I want to copy this code into my thing and use it. That's more like the Isadora story, OK? But there's, there's one last thing. And this is where, honestly, I don't know how this is going to play in and what results we'll see from this. But this is one of the, the extra thing that takes it, I think, to the next step. Because hopefully it's becoming clear this feature is where we're focusing on the side of the interactive artist. Yeah, that's really where this energy, I expect this energy to be spent and who's going to use it. And so for those of you who want to muck around, and this is what I'm going to do in my GLS, I'll show you, I'm going to give a workshop on this about how to tweak this stuff. But here is a, a little example. It's called Bumpy Ball. And um, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have hooked that thing up. Let's hook this, just set this to one. Bumpy Ball just does that. It just kind of vibrates there like that. So I kind of like that one. And what I did was I took that source code, and I went in and I examined it. And sorry, it's a little bit. Let me close this browser again. Uh, so I kind of started poking around. And I, that's the process I'm going to show. Because what I'm going to teach you is the hunt and peck method of modifying GLSL shader code, even if you're a total newbie to code. That's kind of the, G, the workshop I'm giving. But suffice to say, I found a number that when I changed it, I liked what it did. Like when I changed it to a lower number, it kind of got less bumpy. And when I changed it to a higher number, it got more bumpy. And so what we've defined for Isadora is this new comment format. So anything, anything that starts with a slash slash in the source code means that's a comment. That's just a reminder. This is so I can remember what this is supposed to do, et cetera. But if that comments, starts in a format like this, like Isadora float param, that means a floating point number parameter. I gave it the name of the parameter, an identifier, the minimum, the maximum, the default value, and something for the help text. So in fact, if you or take some care and enter some help text, if you share this with someone, they're going to understand what your actor does, which is super helpful. You can also do it for the overall actor. So by entering this comment, it now connects that number inside of the code with a port, with an input port on the actual actor itself. So now if I close this, you'll see that there's an input here that's called bumpiness. Yeah? And so then, again, using the classic methods, here's the, well, first of all, I have to hook it up so you can see it. So there's the bumpy ball. That's what it looked like before. But my voice can manipulate. Right? OK? So. Thank you. So it takes some tweaking, but in the tutorial that we also have a tutorial written for this, it means that you'll be able to um, you'll be able to kind of dig in, and even if you don't know a lot, really it's just about experimenting with a few numbers. And if you find one you like, you can write one of these comments, and it now becomes an interactive parameter. Yeah. So it's a really significant. Um, it's a really significant new feature. And I think, I think we'll see how it plays out in the next few months, but I think it's really going to change a lot of things about the kind of material you're being seeing done. And again, it puts this energy back on the interactive part, which is, of course, the part that's very close to my heart. Very close to my heart. OK. Um, so OK, let me just show you a couple other ones I love. I love this one. So beautiful. And. Um, and this one, if you all want to sing the Doctor Who theme, we could. It might be fun. And uh, so let's sum up with all of this, with what we just looked at. These generative effects, just copy and paste. And you're going to have thousands and thousands at work, and you'll be able to check them out. And again, user community contributions. I think the energy, some of the forum energy will be like, oh my god, I found this shader. And you'll post it in the, in the forum, and people will start trying it, because somebody said it was awesome, right? Um, Real-time interactivity on HD images, just like the other one. And again, updates as easy as posting a text file. If we find a good one, and we need those parameters, because I'm also hoping to hire a couple people that are shader experts 
to help the community along with this, to focus in on what they'd like to see and make it happen a little bit faster, yeah? So that's, that's the really big feature inside of Isadora 2.5, and that's why we kind of made the bump, was that we wanted to be able to take this big step where we got the interactive stuff, because the next step that we're taking is to go back and think about the designers a little bit. And that's weird. Um, you know, for probably a lot of my adult life, there's a phrase I've always wanted to say in front of a group like that, like this. You know what? There's one more thing. <laughs> I forgot, oh, it's actually the actual quote is, I forgot, there's one more thing. Because what you just saw was Chinese, and what the Chinese trans the translation of that Chinese was, thank you, Sammy Chen, wherever you are, the translation was, I, I forgot, there's, one thing, there's something I want to tell you guys, yeah? And what's significant about that, for any of you who have used Isadora, any of you especially who speak any of those non-Roman languages, is that as of Isadora 2.5, this is possible. So what we've added that people, again, like the Zoom, have been asking for for a long, long time is that now we have full multi-language support so that you can type in any possible language, any Unicode language, anything, you know, you saw that there was Arabic there, there was Greek, there was Russian, I mean, anything like that, any of those characters are possible now. And so that's fully supported uh, in Isadora uh, 2.5. So what that means is all text rendering and manipulation functions, but also all of the user interface, the scene names, the actor names, any of the user interface elements, the control panel, they all accept this kind of, um, this kind of Unicode. And we've got, it's not in the version I'm going to offer you uh, shortly, uh, but we have an updated data array actor. I know a lot of you use the data array actor to be able to call back uh, lots of numbers. It's now updated to handle text, and it will also do this Unicode stuff. Yeah, I knew I'd hear a few of those. I, yeah, and um, and uh, and again, what this the next step, which is not part of this, but we it was we had team meetings during this, and we saw an opportunity. We're going to take the text files that are the help text for the actors, and put those in separate files that we'll put on GitHub, and then we'll be able to have community contribution. Uh, con uh, sorry, community contributed translations, so that we can start getting Isadora out there. Because the main thing is that. With this feature being added, Isadora is actually a player in the full international community, which it wasn't before, because you could really only do those Roman languages. And so if we can make that move, not only to allow rendering of that kind of text and manipulation of that kind of text, but also to actually start getting the actual interface itself turned over so that we can have it in Japanese or Russian or these other languages, that's going to make, that's going to help the program grow. And when the program grows, that means that you know you have your tool and it's getting better all the time. So that's really good for all of us. So that's really the end. There's no more one more thing. That was that's Isadora 2.5. Okay, the last part. It's not very long actually. It's the where are we going part. Yeah? And Really what we wanted to do here is to give you um, uh, a peek at what's happening next. As I said, we, we focused this release on really honing in on these features that the interactive artists can really use, yeah? And the next release, we're gonna really put some energy into some things that we think the designers could really use. Um, and I don't think that anybody's gonna lose because of this, because we all benefit from all of these different features that we have. But leading up to that, one of the things that's been overdue too is a redesign of our website. As usual, we were hoping that we could premiere it tonight, but we won't. But I'll at least show you what it looks like because, again, I think it's, a, it's turned out really well. And I'll show you just briefly, very briefly, a couple of features. So there's the front page. And here's what the main part of the site looks like. Yeah. So you've got the basic information that we need when someone lands on the site. But what's interesting here is that we've got this whole section, which is just a mock-up right now, but we've got actually the articles have been done. Every month, we're going to have a new article about an, an Isadora user who's doing something really important. As I said, the reason we are here is because of this community and all of the amazing things that they do. 
And we want to let you know that what those people are up to and to learn from their experiences so that we can all see what's happening. And that just energizes us all even more. So every month you're going to be able to see a new article. And we'll just jump in. Here's, here's a, something that's not real. It's got lorem ipsum text in it, but you get the idea, right? You'll be able to read this article, which will be longer. And so that'll be one thing, is to really feature the artists who are part of this community. And then, of course, the normal things that you see telling you what's great about Isadora. We've really simplified the whole process of getting the software. It's super clean. It's minimized. You just got to go there and download it. No more menus and all this kind of stuff that we used to have before. Just very, very easy. Download by related downloads and register. Nothing more. In this make section, and this is we're still putting this all together, we're going to have all of the tutorials, all of the how-tos, all the things you need to know to be able to be to move forward and do better with Isadora. We're going to put a big focus in the coming in the fall during the fall on hitting on some things that will make things easier to learn. It, again, the thing that makes us special is that we make it easy for people who don't aren't rocket scientists to jump in and do something complicated, right? If you want to learn how to put an Arduino on your brain and control the speed of the movie, we want to help you do that. And so we're going to focus a lot on adding value to things by, by really giving you tutorials that get you through that process. I mean, we've done a pretty good job of adding things in recent times, but that's going to, that's going to become a more regular thing. So that's where you're going to find that. And then in the share section, that's where our new forum is. And the forum, we're, this is one thing we're going to work on. We've decided that we weren't, we, we weren't happy with this layout. That's one thing that delayed the release. We want the timeline back where it's just the most recent article at the top, and we need to do some work to do that. But in general, it's, um, it's clean, and it's readable, and you'll get the information that you want. And there's some other features, like there's a, section, there's a bug report section that we can mark the bug report is solved. So if you want to find a solved problem, you'll see that it's solved. We can, do poll, we can do some topics where it's like talking about a feature request, and you can upvote it and downvote it. But better than the old vanilla site, we get reports about this that look like something that we can actually understand. Um, so there's, there's a whole lot of things going on there that are going to be really helpful. And then the normal help site, just to give you the FAQ and different things that you need to know. This is where the user exchange, no, that actually needs to move to another part, but this is where You'll be, oh, user actors. OK, we're going to, you know, that's always been something people have been looking for, too, is where do I find that user actor? And so there's Michelle's timer tool, which I know many of you use. And so it's just there with a description, and you can download it. But here's the, actually the reason we decided to go with the system more than anything else is that the help system actually works. I mean, sorry, the search system actually works. So if I type menu bar, hit return. Here's the question that the tech team told me they get more often than anything. Oh, wait, is that the one? Did it come up? I, no, there's the, I think I, I think I don't use the quotes. I shouldn't have done that. Or else I'm in the wrong section. Well, anyway, <laughs> the point is, it, it's like it actually finds the stuff you want when you're searching. You can always see, I think it's because I'm searching in the forum. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm searching in solutions instead of the forum. There, that's the one. Wait, let me zoom in. That's the one the tech team was telling me that they get all the time. Menu bar in OS X Yosemite won't disappear in full screen. Thank you, Apple, for like making us spend a lot of time answering that question, right? OK, but that's what I mean. I mean, it really, the search engine is so good on this that it really, and even if you do a support ticket, if I go here, and I start uh, in the subject, I start typing menu bar. It's going to already give you relate. It's going to search the forum, the tickets, everything that we have. And it's going to give you suggestions about how to find the answer to that question more quickly. So that, that's the really the big reason that we chose the forum, this particular system. And I think that's going to help all of us help you better. Yeah, And that's the main point. And also, I mean, other things like important stuff, like if you're doing it on an iPhone, it all scales beautifully and looks great, even in that format, yeah? OK, so that's the new website. That's the next slide. New website, done. OK, but um, the other thing is that for a long time, people wanted a roadmap. And we just kind of like, uh, roadmap, roadmap. But now we're going we're gonna to really start giving you these roadmaps so you know where we're headed. So that's what we're else we're giving you tonight is this roadmap. For the designer side of the equation, 
we're going to work on a new queue based interface that if all you're trying to do is queue your show, you don't even know, need to know what an actor is. You just queue your show and it's going to be done like that. And you're going to get all the incredible playback performance that you get in Isadora. And it's just going to be super easy and super fast. And it, it, it will simplify that because some people that's really all that they're looking for in that side of the equation. Easy and fast edge blending. I can actually, I'm not going to demo it right now, but I actually have, this is almost done, a vastly improved way of doing edge blending that's going to add a lot of power to Isadora and offer new things like independent siphon outputs that you never see that are just feeds to siphon, for instance. Time, a serious integration of time code and ArtNet. Obviously, if you're a professional desire, designer, I mean, I've, it's funny. I said this to the team the other day. It's been a philosophical hang up. They change the loop, loop start and play length things from percentage to time code. It's like it somehow always felt wrong in Isadora. But at this point, I have to acknowledge if you're a professional designer using this software, you really just want to be able to type in time code. And not only that, you want your movies to lock to time code. You want your cues to be based on time code. You want actually the possibility, which we will also offer, of having multiple computers running Isadora where the video is locked to a single time code and you know that it's going to be frame accurate. So that's something that we're going to have uh, coming in the next version. Soft edges and Izzy map, that's an obvious one. And we're going to give you that so that you can have those nice soft uh, edges on the, uh, all the Izzy map possibilities. Um, that's something that a lot of people have asked for. And for the Windows people specifically, we are going to find a way, even though they don't make it super easy, I must say, Microsoft, this is a place that's tricky to support. But we're going to find a way to give you the same kind of multi-channel audio support that you have on the Mac so that those are completely equal. Yes, I knew that would you'd get a few things too. So we're going we're gonna to commit to making that happen. Yeah, And then in terms of what we're coming up for for the artist, obviously the GLSL Shader Actor is going to give you many more visual effects. Um, I, oh, I meant to mention, a uh, wonderful programmer wrote that module for me, um, the uh, Leap Motion module. He's called Andrew Semperi. And I'm also going to invite him to work with me, uh, work with us. To, we want to give you Connect 2 support ASAP. We, wanna, we took a long time to be able to give you that in the Connect 360, but we're going to move quickly to give you Connect 2 support as best we can on both platforms so that you can have that kind of tracking ability. Um, for people that are doing stuff with Arduino, it's always a question, and it's always hard to get started. We're going to give you some really clear templates so that you can get started, and you just don't have to think. And you can, if you want six analog inputs, that's the template you're going to have, and you'll be able to get that stuff coming in. So if you want to work with sensors, you'll be able to do it. I really have a few ideas about giving much better uh, options for tracking beyond um, eyes and eyes plus plus. We're going to do that too, and um, and then the biggest thing, though, I think the thing where we can, without changing the code even a little bit, that we can really help you is by identifying the places where you really get stuck and you really want to do something, but you just don't quite have that knowledge, ba knowledge set to be able to do it, so that we can write you a tutorial so that you can do it. Yeah, That's the Isadora philosophy, and that's where I think we can add a lot to what's already out there. So that's our roadmap. And our idea is that we would like to achieve those goals at, at early, early 2017. I'm not going to be specific about dates yet. We have to evaluate. We came up with these goals during our team meeting two days ago, so I'm not going to. I'm. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to put a date on them yet. But the first quarter of 2017, that's what we're aiming for with this. Yeah. So. That's it. That's the, my little presentation. That's my keynote, and that brings me to where we're at right now, which is the Toygatronic Isadora Virtual 2016. Um, Janie. Oh. Jamie Griffiths, who used to work with us and lives in the northern climes, way above the Arctic Circle. I guess she's watching. So, Jamie, hi. Um, she used to be on our team. And she ended up doing something. She's working actually above the Arctic Circle, where it is absolutely this frighteningly cold in the winter. But she sees the northern lights almost every day. And it really makes me angry, because I really want to see them. So um, so that's where we, we are today. And, I don't want to continue. I want to get done because I want to enjoy the performance that we have coming. But I have to say a couple things about this. When we started this, and we kind of came up with the size that we thought would be good, we thought, well, we better start selling tickets three months in advance because we're never going to fill this. You know, that was our thinking because we just didn't know. And we put those tickets on sale, and in ten days, it was sold out. It still blows my mind to think about it. And lots and lots of people who wanted to come 
were turned away because we only had space for around about 100 people. It's clear we'll do a bigger one next year, that's for sure. And we will do another one next year. And while, again, I won't make a promise on this, it really seems clear that we need to alternate, like, like do something. We do one here at a certain time, and six months later, we do another one in North America so that we can make it a little bit easier for people to get to us, right? But the main point is that, for me, this is just really a fantastic joy to see you people here because you care about this software, because you're creative people, all whom I want to meet because you're creative and that's the kind of person I want to be around. And that you're going to tell each other stuff that you never thought of and this whole energy is going to emerge that I, I just, I couldn't make myself. You're going to make that energy. And so I'm just so pleased that you could join us. I hope that, oh, and one thing, we've never done this before. Something is going to go really wrong somewhere. Please, please be gentle with us. We're doing the best we can, but, but, but because they, actually the great thing is I told Xenia, I said, the thing is, they all knew how to do technical stuff. They will help you, actually, if something goes <laughs> right. So it's actually cool. But in any case, um, yeah, it's the first time we've ever done it. Hopefully nothing terrible will go wrong, but we're, we, there's going to be some things. One thing, small point that would really help us, there's a lot of changeovers where we, we didn't plan it so cleverly. Where we have to go from like 20 seats to 50 seats. We might ask you to like pick up a seat and set it down just to help the team out and moving along. That would be fantastic if you could give us a hand just with the small point of the seating. Because again, we could have done it a little bit more cleverly probably. But again, the main point is that you're here. I hope that you have a really fantastic time. I hope that you walk away with knowledge that you didn't have before. And I hope that you meet people that you will continue a connection with. I am so grateful to all of you that you have allowed me to have so much fun making this and allowing me to see what you do. Thank you so much. Sanya. Hmm. Okay, here's what's going to happen next. We're going to take a short break, about 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 15, but let's try and keep it a little short. And after that, uh, oh, wait, ah, there was something really important I wanted to say about the workshop. I'm so sorry. I really must say this. The other thing that's a dream come true, I'll just be saying it really shortly, this isn't just workshops. Every single night we're having performances. That, for me, is a personal dream come true. It really is. And we've got some great things lined up, like the thing we're about to see. This, uh, I just want to mention the names of the artists, and, and it, it, this will just take a moment, sorry. Uh, oh, Valentina, say your last name for me. Bezega, Valentina Bezega and Alessandro Masobrio. Yeah? Okay. That, they're performing for us tonight in a moment. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. We had two, we also made a collaboration with Lake Studios Berlin. This is a studio in Berlin where I've had three residencies. I've gone out there to make work. Marcella laughs every time. Marcella Gisha is the leader of that place, and she laughs every time because I say it the same way. In the center of that dance floor is a magic vortex of creativity. If you want to have a great residency, go to Lake Studios because it's really, a, honestly, a magical place. So Mar Marcella and I, is pretty, she's having artists out there all the time, and we decided to make a collaboration where Troikatronics would support two residencies where artists could come in and work specifically on dance and media pieces. And so uh, we have here uh, from Canada, and again, another last name I'm going to probably murder, sorry, but Jacob Niedervesky? Um, sorry, Jacob. All right. Jacob is going to be here. And then, uh, and also uh, a group called Stratophysica. Yeah? Two very different pieces, you'll see. And what you're seeing is the outcome of their one month residency. So it's as a dear friend of mine in LA used to host performances, used to say, it's BSN. That means brand spanking new. Yeah? So you're gonna see some exciting new work from them that is, has just been made and that they'll be showing for the first time. And then uh, also we have Marcella Gisha and Sonia something, I'm sorry, Sonia. They have a piece called Left Eye, Right Eye that will be performed at, hmm? Thank you, Sonia Levin. They'll be performing a piece that's a, a dance piece that involves, um, it's actually media of a different kind in a way, but it's a, it's a lovely piece, and uh, that's another one. And then the final thing that I'm really looking forward to, Lil Van is a video artist that has collaborated. I know him because he collaborated with my mentor, Morton Sabotnik, several times. 
I think he is just one of the most tasteful people using video out there. And I think that's a really great performance. And he has invited, surprisingly enough to us, because he didn't say this at the beginning, there's a guy called Schneider TM, who I actually don't know, I'm sorry to say, but apparently is really famous. So on Saturday night, that is a show that I think you'll really enjoy. So, but mostly I, I think Isadora isn't just about code and about programming, it's about making art. And so it was really important to me that we had performances every night. And so you're gonna have the benefit of having days where you're learning a lot and you're gonna go see stuff in the night and I can't imagine a more perfect life than that really, right? So um, now I'm really done. And what we're gonna do is take this break and we're gonna come back, so get a drink, take a break, we're gonna come back. But I do wanna make it clear that the moment while we listen to this piece, it's not a socializing moment where we're clinking cocktails and chatting. It's really a performance, so we're going to sit and really observe it, and then afterwards we can do a little bit more sharing. Okay, thanks everybody. We'll see you in 15 minutes.